channel. We are so excited to have you guys here today because last week we were able to launch every single letter and number to the alphabet in our brand new 3D letters. And we are so excited because we are going to be walking with you guys today to build one of these beautiful letters. And we cannot wait to share with you guys exactly how to do it using cardstock and a few additional supplies. So as you guys are tuning in to today's show, go ahead and give us some comments. Let us know where you're visiting from let us know what you've got going on in your neck of the woods on this beautiful tuesday here is a few things that we'll need today so you'll need a die cutting machine um you can use the cricut maker you can use the cricut explorer this would be a little um too big of a project for the joy you you will be using the fine point blade so any of the die cutting machines that use the fine point blade you can use it so all of them with design space so woohoo Next up, you're going to need some cardstock. Now we're using some of this right here. This right here is galvanized metal cardstock. So we love this. Um, and this is one sided cardstock. So we're gonna be working with you guys and walking with you guys on how to use one sided cardstock for today's project. So if you guys have any questions on that, let us know in the comments down below. Um, we will be working through any of the errors like that. If you want a foolproof way to make this project, I would recommend double-sided cardstock with the same pattern. Um, so you could use white, black, any of those colors. And maybe a little heavier too. This one that we've got is a little bit thinner. Yeah, I we just want the galvanized little, metal. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to pull it out, but I think uh, it's but it's easier thicker, to work. The better. Yeah, with, with yeah. thicker. Um, so this one's a little bit more like 80 pound cardstock. We really, really, maybe a little bit less than 80 pound, but we really do love when we're able to use that thicker cardstock. And towards the end of today's video, we'll be able to share with you guys a true comparison on the difference between the two different weights and how durable, you know, that stronger um, pound is. So, so much fun, so much fun, um, and we're really excited. Next up, we have our Scotch ATG uh, gun. This is the Scotch Advanced Tape Glider. We absolutely love the advanced tape glider. It's really awesome. And then we have a few tools that we're using today. So we have the scoring stylus that we're going to feature in today's video. We have just one of our pokey tools and we have the bone folders. So that's awesome. And then we're also going to have on hand our Lynn Lily hot glue gun. Now we're still waiting for this to get back in stock for you guys to pick up, but we're still enjoying ours. And then we're using some brads over in the corners of today's project. And then last but not least, we are going to be talking about using this hammered um, look of Rust-Oleum spray paint to make projects look really awesome like our M. So there's a lot of awesome things that we're going to walk with you guys on. This is a highly requested thing for our Makers Gonna Learn members. If you are not a Makers Gonna Learn member, today is an amazing day to say yes to membership and become a Best Value Year member so you get access to everything. Our cut files, our fonts, our free training, our eBooks, so much that you can get advantage and take advantage of today. Um, so we're going to be working with this and you can be any member gets access to these 3D letters. So that's one thing we're super, super excited about. But Rachel, how is everyone doing? Everyone seems to be doing great. I know they are so excited for this project because we had a lot of people just waiting yes, on us to begin. Yes, the Facebook group, everyone. Absolutely. So they're letting us know where they're visiting from. We have people from all over. And we do have Miss <clears throat> Megan. And Tanner, we get hey, this a Megan. lot. A lot of people want to know, how do I know if the cardstock that I bought bulk on, you know, right. Facebook Marketplace is A, good quality, and B, what are some tips to know if it's a good poundage or not? So, honestly, like, the more that you just work with cardstock is the more you're going to be able to feel it and say, oh, this is 60 pound, oh, this is 80 pound, um, anything like that. The thicker, the better quality. You're just going to want to feel it and just be you know, taking notes of like how this feels, how does it feel when you go like this? Like I can honestly pick up a piece of paper and just shake it and just by the feel and the noise tell how strong it is. If it's doing something like this number, this is some low, lower um, poundage because this right here is the, let's see if it tells us on the back here. So this is um, a 12 by 12 sheet from the paper studio. So it's not too thick, um, but it cuts pretty good. So that's nice, but it's acid free um, and it'll be really great for today's project. Again, you just want to be able to shake it and you want to be able to, you know, see that this is right here. Like I'm trying to like press this in and stuff like that. I mean, Rachel, this stuff is like 
That's craft board, I think. Oh, is it really craft I board? Think. I love, I love, love, love using the craft board and this thicker cardstock. She'll start being able to see, um, you know, when you get up to 110, 120 pound cardstock, it gets more like craft board, which is really cool. So, and Tanner, does all cardstock have a white core? Um, no, it does not all have a white core. That's a great question. There's so many different paper that you can get with a uh, white core. You can get it the same color throughout the entire um, piece. So what that means is when you rip it, I'll, I'll rip this just to show example. So this has a white core. So can you show the second camera Absolutely. real quick? Absolutely. So this right here has a white core on it. So you guys can see that is white. Now if this is pattern cardstock, you can get some pattern cardstock to um, not be white core and it would be the same color straight through. Um, so that makes those edges look a little bit more finished and things like that. So that is a great question. I do want to shout out Barbara. She says everyone really can't afford to, joy, uh, to join. PayPal is the answer and there is um, and there they pay the whole thing, but you pay monthly payments to them, um, and that's PayPal. So if you guys are on the fence about our year membership and you want all of those bonuses, you want to lock in that lower price value, Barbara made a great point where you can get zero, in most cases, 0% interest for 6 to 18 months on our year membership and pay them back when it's convenient to you um, in smaller payments and things like that. So that's exciting. We're so excited. Um, Sharon says she's excited. She can't wait to see it, how it come together. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming to the training last night. We had a lot, a lot of fun um, walking you guys through some of our favorite Cricut um, hacks and things like that. So that was fun. So thanks for coming. Um, you guys are amazing. We're, we're perfecting that uh, training for all kinds of newbies um, every time we do it. So <clears throat> getting your response and your feedback is always really, really awesome. So let us know if you have any questions on membership or anything like that. But here in a minute, we're about to jump into the software and start cutting and kind of share with you guys a few of these different letters so that you can download these. And if you have any questions, we can address those. So um, are there any questions? It looks like you've answered them all, Yay. which is great. Everybody continue to ask those questions. Let us know. This is a highly anticipated video from you guys. So don't hold back. Let us know what you'd like to hear. Exactly. So we're going to be so excited to go ahead and share that screen. Um, and we'll be able to jump into what we are working with today. So um, it is going to be really awesome. What you're looking at right here is our brand new cut files and you can see, you can find them under the 3D where you're gonna find all the different letters, all the different numbers, um, you know, right here for us. So you can just type in 3D and the letter that you need and it is gonna be really awesome. You have some other 3D ones that you can find under 3D as well. Um, and in today's video, we are going to walk with you guys on how to make the E. Now, when you upload this cut file, you're going to see um, right here. And I love Stampin' Up! cardstock. It's like a solid 80 pound cardstock for the most part. And it does really well. Great, um, really great quality. So right here, you're going to notice you have a square, a triangle, and a dot. And that's just going to share with you guys exactly where to start placing your... Um, you know your different 3d parts of the project so that will share with you guys where to start that um so you'll just you know want to line those up and then um we'll kind of walk with you guys through to make this so we're so excited um to kind of share that so yay i know these can look intimidating yeah you know? we're gonna walk them we're gonna break it down and kind of walk with you guys on how that is going to work out and um we'll definitely be able to line those up to make sure um, it is done appropriately. So yay, it is gonna be really awesome. Um, and Sasset so says, think this could be a craft you could send flat. This is probably not one we would recommend sending flat. Probably would recommend more of a handmade card or something like that. Yeah, um, I mean, feel free to erase all this stuff except for one half of the E and have it just be, you know, like a, a two-dimensional right. letter there. That's the only way I could see it being, you know, quote unquote yeah, flat, flat, but. Yeah. For sure, it'd be kind of hard to build these um, for them. So yay, and yes, we're so excited to offer these for anyone that needs them. Um, so, so excited. So anyway, this is just what it is. Now you do want to be, um, you know, what is really easy is that you can just measure this right here and see the letters. So this right here is pretty, pretty large. Um, mm -hmm. So you just set that up and you do want to scale it all together. So notice that these are attached um, down here. 
So you scale it all up together. It's such an easy mistake to make to try and size them separately just to fit on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Right. But then they will not fit together. Yeah, so you do want to be mindful about that when you are you import it and you're scaling it up or down, that you scale it all um, at, together. So that is an amazing, amazing um, little tip and something that you want to remember as you are going to be making these because they are a lot, a lot of fun. So we're going to go ahead and once you're happy be there you can go ahead and press make it and you're going to see it's going to line all this up on one mat and then skill line your ease up on another so it's go score and cut so you'll press continue and we're going to connect to the machine and now what we're going to do is we are going to be able to select we're going to do medium cardstock and then it's going to say load in that scoring wheel. But I told you guys today we are using the scoring stylus. So under step two, we'll click edit tools and we're going to click on the scoring stylus. So then press apply. So now we've been able to do that. And what we're going to do now is we'll be able to go ahead and turn fast mode on after we load it in. Um, but what we need to do now is go ahead and load our cardstock on our fine grit mat. So right here, I'm going to zoom out a little and we're just going to take a piece of our cardstock, just apply it down. Our stickiness is, oh, oh, it's great. It's great. Wanted to do a little check in. It doesn't need to be too sticky. No, 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 not at all, especially with the lighter cardstock. So if you want to go ahead to the main cam, woohoo! I'm putting my rollers, my little white rollers, back where they need to be. Um, and then what we're going to do is load this in. But before we move forward, we need to open clamp A and insert our scoring stylus. So open that up, take this right here, press it down, um, let that kind of pop in. Normally I hear it click. Oh, there it's, we go. It's been a problem for us today. Make sure it actually kind of doesn't clip, like click. Don't let it click? Yeah, make sure it's not down too, too far. I think that's, well, it's down pretty far. Now I don't know how it normally goes. I just let it chill that's there. It Becca had some just problems it earlier. It pop out. It was weird. Oh. So you just kind of let it chill? Yeah. yeah okay. This It's not normal for the machines, guys. Just right. this one. Yeah, normally, <laughs> normally you would press it down, you'll hit or click, and it's at the perfect level. Um, I think ours may be a little, a little off today. We've been giving our workout. So what we're going to do now is once you're good, if you want to go ahead and turn fast mode on for us, we'll be able to now press that flashing cricket button. And it's going to cut out our first um mat and then after it's done we can start scoring it while it cuts our second mat and miss diana you absolutely can use your scoring wheel if you would like the only problem we don't love using that scoring wheel is because we're very lazy and we would have to change out that clamp it goes in clamp b and yeah. we're not a we're not a fan like i love that the scoring stylus and the fine point blade can be there and they're at one fell swoop yeah so that's really awesome isabel says this is why i love the makers lawyer membership is so different you can get other um you can get other get files other places but i can never get training like i do here yay miss isabel we're so excited now if you guys are um you know loving the training and you're like i need these cut files i need extra training i need to master my machine i highly recommend you guys to go ahead and join makers and learn today so that you can be a yearly best value member right along with us and get access to over 250 fonts free courses and so much more Look at these score lines. They are perfection. Okay, it's checking for that fine point blade. We don't have to, usually it'll say, okay, now switch if you're using yeah. that scoring. Uh, but we'll... I love the stylus. It does amazing results yeah. for me. And yeah. I'm just, I'm a fan. I'm a for sure fan. Look at it go. Yay. Okay, and it cuts through really quickly. That's another big um, part of this as well. Rachel, how was it recovering from the summit? It was good. 
It was I had good. so much fun at the summit. We had a lot of fun with you guys. Thank you so much for attending. And if you guys missed out on the summit, um, you're going to definitely want to uh, be there for our 2020 summit. And if you still need to get your passport to finish that out, go ahead and take advantage. And for our summit members, um, you'll be getting your special pricing emails and the recorded uh, summits emailed to you very soon. So, yay. I think that the ticket holders were the ones that needed to recover. They're the ones right? that got, they got all of, of that info. <laughs> We got a lot of projects to make. I love it. And um, uh, Tanner, Miss Crystal says, can you engrave with the Cricut Explore Air 2? So there is an off-market engraving tool that you can purchase from Amazon for the Explore Air 2. We have a few videos that you can check it out. Um, but if you want to engrave with the Cricut's recommended tools, you will need an awesome Cricut maker. So notice how I've folded my mat so I can kind of peel it off like this. This is a great tip. That way your paper does not fold. Um, so you can just lay that flat. We're gonna take another sheet and it'll cut our E's, our front and our back E. And this won't take any time at all to cut. No, for sure, for sure. No so scoring on this one. Apply that on. And again, we don't have to sit here and watch it because we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and start uh, creasing these for us. So we can press that flashing cricket button and we'll be good to go. It looks like they cut great too. They did, honestly. Um, this cut amazing. So what we're going to do is grab our bone folder. Now, who is excited to be able to use a bone folder? I love the bone folder. It works amazing. It's like three dollars. Best investment. If you don't, if you can't invest in it, you don't feel like it's worth it. Use a gift card. But honestly, like I will, you know, I love these. And Tanner, Miss Lori says, can you score with the Explore Air 2? Of course, of course, of course. There is a clamp A, so you'd have to use the scoring stylus like we did today. But the best part is it's our favorite. I think the more that we craft here, guys, the more that we are just loving our Explore Air 2, um, just because it does so much. So no matter what machine you use, we um, want to make sure we're supporting you guys and you have the training. So that's a great, great question. And Tanner, where did this beautiful paper come from? This is just this paper studio from Hobby Lobby. Um, so you can order some online right now or just wait to go later. Um, and it'll be really awesome for you. So I think that I came across this looking, this was like back in October when we launched the very first farmhouse, uh, farmhouse collection. So I was definitely looking for some farmhousey paper. I found some cotton, some really pretty wood, and I saw this. And it's I bought. It's been featured a few times. I bought like a ton paper. of it. Yeah, this paper has been featured in farmhouse projects, oh, yeah. Christmas projects, Thanksgiving projects. I think um, we're a fan of. We've decoupaged with it. We're building 3D letters with it. I mean, you name it. It's a great paper. Yeah, it really, really is. Beautiful. But notice, we're just going to fold in. Um, I think was it. The Thursday's live stream where me and Rachel had a really um, great little chat about how to crease and kind of like yeah, I think when so. to crease, how, what process do we both go in. Yeah, because I definitely overthink my crease. And then with this being a one-sided paper, I thought about, well, you know, does it matter what side you crease with? Well, of course it matters because it's one-sided, so we'll right. see how, you know, this goes. But I'm sure a lot of you probably do not overthink creasing. Yeah, you know, I just follow it just like... You know, it's outlined. Like I just feel like this is like our our map, and we just have to crease each piece. So. And you said that this is something you would do like watching TV. Yeah, and this is so repetitive that you don't even have to really, you know, focus in. Like the hardest part for this project is going to be aligning this after it's all creased um, to glue it together. So this is, you know, we're we're two pieces down right here. We're about to grab our third piece. So it's so awesome. Oh, I currently have my 3D spring on my mantle, but I made this last year. Yay! Aw, we're so glad you guys enjoyed the summit. I've been seeing a lot of posts on Facebook of what everybody made mm -hmm, for the summit, too. Mm -hmm. Everybody was getting crafty. And again, where is the paper from? Miss Susan must have Hobby popped in a Lobby. little bit late. Yep. Hobby Lobby has the hookup for it's the It's that paper. amazing... Paper, paper all studio. that we mm -hmm. can just get lost in for a very yeah, long time. Yeah, and this right here you can get single sheets, so no matter how many letters you need, you don't have to um, overspend or anything. And like they're that. usually like four for a dollar. Yeah, so they have it's some not really like great breaking promotions. the bank. Woohoo! Okay, so 
So next up, we're going to fold right here. Okay, we've been able to fold all that. So we've got our three folds right here. Really easy. These three pieces needed to be folded. You did that really quickly. Yeah, not bad at all, right? So now you can just fill this up and you just want to be careful. Now I'm going to purposely leave um, a few things right where we have it. So where these letters are placed, where this top letter is placed, we have those little dots. We're going to leave them here as kind of reference for what we got going on. So we have a triangle here. I don't think we needed this square right there. Um, I don't believe so. And then um, this square. So you have the square, triangle, and dot. Um, and that is what we're going to use to reference. So this E right here is our bottom. So we'll start on the bottom and then build up and then place this one um, right there. So yay, so excited. Um, now obviously you guys will see a lot of this is going to come together itself. So it kind of is self-explanatory a little bit um, and it's not hard to place it together. Like obviously what other where you can't put this you know on this side or anything like that so it's going to obviously go right here um so that's awesome now my tip here is to go ahead and fold over the edge just like so we're going to take the atg um advanced tape glotter and eileen says can you use 110 pound cardstock we love and highly recommend 110 pound cardstock and give us a comment um if you have an atg gun let us know if you love it. We love ours. So what we're going to do is just run it along one side of the paper. I cannot um, imagine doing this with one of those teeny tiny ones or liquid glue or anything right, like that. Right, right. It, it would be a pain. It would be a pain. So now you just set this up right here. And you might want to have it facing you. So you can line this up. And once you line it up, you can apply the pressure where the adhesive was applied. And the best part is if you need to move it, anything like that, you have the ability to, which is great. So just like so, I just want to share with you guys how these are looking. How is it looking? Notice the paper lined up right here at the edges. Just like so. So then we'll end up putting more, paper, more adhesive right here um, once we feel comfortable. So before we move forward in doing this side over here, I'm going to go ahead and apply adhesive to this, but we may um, apply a little bit more here in a little bit. So you just want to hold it down and apply that adhesive. Now you're going to try not to touch it in the meantime. That's a good tip. You could definitely get watered up in an yeah. awkward position if you don't mm -hmm. go ahead and add that. Yeah, you want to think about how you can lay it flat because you have to, have to, have to apply pressure for the oh, yeah. adhesive to stick. So that's a great little tip. And then now you're going to move on to your next part of this. And this is where, you know, you may have run into some difficulties about picking where to line it up. But the best part is you want to be able to go ahead and figure out where that little triangle needs to go. So you can see we've already lined up our square um, down here. But now we need to line up that triangle, which the triangle will end up starting um, to go over over here. So it looks like you can see that it'll kind of go like this a little bit. You'll have a little of this number, possibly, possibly, just like so. Um, and then this one will actually line up right here and go with us so you can fold it in and oh. you just want to start visualizing it poor miss misty she said i learned the hard way hard way that i needed an atg gun i was in a hurry and grabbed the cheap little ones it did uh -oh. not go well uh oh and that will happen it's totally fine so this right here will be the start of the harder part of the project i just want to give you guys that heads up the harder part of the project um so this is kind of what you'll be doing first it's a great little piece i highly recommend doing this letter just as we're doing it um so now what we're going to do is kind of just start lining that up like we did so we'll take this whole row right down here and just apply that adhesive and guys one time when i was 
cocky and wanted to change this myself. I oh. tried to change it and I accidentally used a roll that was for wood and metal and not paper. Oh. And that thing stuck to everything. Do you remember that tan? Yes, it was oh. sticking. It was like, oh my gosh. it was being crazy. It was being crazy, crazy. Um, so we're go go ahead and apply. So there are different types. If yeah, you get yeah. The, make sure make sure you do it for paper. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now we're going to just be able to line this up right here. So just like so, always want to start and make sure those edges line up in the corners, and then you can fold this in. And then you can keep going with it. Fold this over. Line that up. Fold this one in. And look at that. So now we're starting to starting to see our shape come together. This is so cute. Isn't it adorable? Like it does take a little brain power, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but you'll be able to get there really um, quickly. So now you may be saying, how am I gonna get adhesive on these parts? So you may want to um, be mindful of that prior. If you're like me and you're like, oh, how can I do that real quick before I um, you know, get crazy out of the way, I kind of lay it this way. And notice we have this little piece over here. So you can just apply some adhesive there. And apply some adhesive there. Okay. And then you want to be careful about applying it right here. You can always use your hand to help apply it, but it will not stay near as well. But it does work, just not near as well. Would liquid glue be easier to use, Miss Georgia asks? So the reason why you could apply it easier, yes. But imagine your dry time. The quick drying effect of this right here is what is the secret behind it. Um, well, that and that you, when you stick this down, it's already dry, so it's not gonna move. Liquid right. glue will still move on you. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather struggle with this. This is what I would personally, personally recommend. Um, but again, that is personal preference. So now we're moving on to our final piece, and this is our final piece. So it is not hard whatsoever to you know truly build these and just line it up and have a lot of fun. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to both sides. Okay, so then you can fold this side in and then fold in these. And remember guys, whenever we did launch these, we mentioned that if you're just starting out making really anything 3D, especially 3D letters or numbers, it's always easier to go as big as you can. Mm -hmm. So anything smaller than this, I would I would save for when you're a bit more advanced because the right. smaller it gets, the tighter the corners are and the, the harder it'll be to apply. Yeah. Um, so then you're going to want to kind of take this, line it up. just like so. Then you can you know, give this some extra stability from this other pocket. Make sure that you line those up, that's another secret. And then you're gonna take this in right here, place that down. Kimberly said that paper looks awesome. <gasps> right? We love this paper, it's doing amazing for us. And honestly, it just starts coming together really quick. Like, this is crazy how fast and you can take the bone folder and get in there to make sure you're applying enough down enough pressure so that it adheres and then you kind of have a little work around Tom so if you need to peel it up like I'm gonna peel this up to reposition it just a little bit so I notice when you peel this up too in this part just a little bit to move it to the corner Awesome. And then you can come right here, line this up, 
and now you'll be able to go through and start applying your top layer. So woohoo, look at that. We have the we have the back of the E. The back of the E is looking good. You can see the sides. You can kind of see how everything's doing. And again, this is a lot of fun. So you can see this is like 60 pound of cardstock. So it's not gonna apply down as easy, but it's still gonna be really good. And then, this is where the fun part happens. You wanna start on one side. And again, you can use your fingers to start applying this down. And then once you align this, you can stick the bone folder in there to make sure these edges are going to stick. And then I'm going to align up these other two sides right like this. And you wanna make sure all the little edges are folded up. So like this edge right here is folded down. So you need to take this and fold it up. Ta-da! Just like that. Then you can bring this in. Make sure those edges are folded up. That's the secret, they gotta adhere. You want that to adhere. Start with each side. So you got this corner, and now we'll do this corner right here. Fold in your edges. Pop those out. Michelle said, thank you for doing this video. My boyfriend wants metal letters for his barber shop. Dude, that'd be so cool. I love that idea. We're so excited to have these 3D letters because they are so amazing and they're so highly requested. So now you want to start on one side and kind of you can kind of pinch it and it'll pop back out um, for that final edge. And this piece right here needs to go in. So ta-da! Diane said, now I know what those little squares and triangles were for. It makes a, it a lot easier. Yeah, they are just there to help guide you. And then now you have your your letter and it's gonna be really awesome to be able to replicate this because now you have the sides. I love the paper choice, so, so good. Um, and if you're, you know, Mary, if you're making this with solid cardstock, you'll follow the same exact process. Um, this was one-sided cardstock, meaning the pattern is not on the back, which actually is a bigger, it's harder because you have to remember, you know, your sides and things like that a little bit more. So um, this was the letter. And then what we did for this one, we did solid cardstock. And then how you're gonna be able to take these up a few notches is you're gonna be able to use a tool to kind of poke some holes. So for example, we're going to um, just quickly try to poke some holes in this. And this is not too, too sharp, um, but you do wanna kind of get the hole started right here just like so. And then after you poke it, you can add a brad because this is so good um, to kind of finish off your 3D project. So if you're doing this for um, something like a barber shop or anything like that, you could add you know, some complimenting brads and different things. You could glue them in place if you want as well. Um, it's not hard at all to kind of go through and poke some of these holes um, and have a lot of fun with this. You could actually do it before you even apply it down to make it even easier to make sure it's all good. So I'm gonna actually try the weeding tool because this pin pin tool is so sharp. I think it will poke, oh my gosh. Look at how great, it's a tiny, tiny hole, but I think it would be a great starter hole. Maybe too, too small. Yep, too small. So that's one of the downfalls of using lighter cardstock like we're doing today. Trying to poke through a few um, layers of it can be hard on occasion. Oh, Bless me. you. Thank you. But yeah, look. So now you're you know, able to add two of the brads. We love, love, love our brads. And Miss Teresa said, just joined in. Could you use craft board for this? Yes, I love, love, love craft board. We just wanted to do kind of a more galvanized look today. Um, so that's kind of our choice. But yeah, use what material you have on hand. Obviously, we're not running out to the craft stores too much. So use what you got. And then ooh, I love this pin pin tool to start the hole. And then you're able to kind of you know, open it up. And we're using the creative options storage to kind of keep our brad, our new brad addiction. 
um, organized, contained. Holly, how are you, my friend? So good to see you on. Stay crafty. Okay, so as you can see, we just poked those. And then you can just continue on around. It's not hard whatsoever. So look at that. You can just poke it and drop it. Poke it and drop it. So this is a great way to finish your brads. If you don't want to pick up cardstock like this, but you want to be able to finish, um, you know, quite a bit of different things, you will be able to um, use the spray paint that we used on the M. That's a cool spray paint. It is a really cool spray paint. I'll show you what it is real quick. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, this right here and you're using the craft board, you're using the thicker chipboard or things like that, you can totally use this Rust-Oleum um, hammered look and it's awesome. So go ahead, take a screenshot of this if you guys um, would like to be able to just give the coat a spray paint um, and it's a lot of fun. Sandy says, maybe put the brads on before assembling. Yes, you can totally do that. Looking back, I highly, highly recommend it. So do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> Never a better, truer statement than things like this. Uh, Mel says, why would my score lines not show up? So Mel, you want to make sure that in the software, and that's something we totally forgot to touch on for you guys, is after you upload them, you need to change it to a uh, score line. So I'll walk you with you guys on that here in one moment. So, so sorry about that. In the beginning of the training, I got ahead of myself. So I'm going to go poke with just a few more of these and finish this off. I just go kind of poke. And finish these. So yay. How adorable. Um, but yeah, totally recommend poking these prior to applying down. But as you can see, either way it will work totally fine. And of course, the thicker the paper is, the, the, the way easier it is to do is. that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. our pokey tool is a whole lot less than pokey. <laughs> right? It's, it's bent up, but you adorable. know. It's adorable. So you are able to just kind of poke that through. And then we just have two more. And this is kind of the test on how your build is. So you may find some places that you need to apply more adhesive, and you may find some areas that you need to um, kind of move real quick, and make sure it is going to apply properly. So you may need to do that. So you can take that, and the bone folder does works wonders when you're needing to position things after you've started building it. So you can kind of lift it up and move things over really easily with the bone folder so you can do that but i will toy with it after but you guys can quickly see that's how easy it is to build the 3d letter you can do the galvanized look if you have thicker craft boards and things like that that you need to be able to go with and things like that it is so so much fun so yay jenny says hi tracy today is your day right last day what what's the last day i need i need to be updated on this so hello Hello, hello. But yeah, let's go ahead and share with you guys how to set these up in um, Cricut Design Space to make sure your score line is proper. Um, great, great little question that you guys um, have asked. So what we have right here is your different um, layers. So this right here is the letter E, um, but without the, the actual cutout. So this is where you're going to get the um, pieces that make it the 3D. So this is gonna be all attached together. Um, and you're going to notice that right here with this um, you know, little black square, we've changed the color so you can see it. This is gonna upload as like a, oh, my last day of chemo, woohoo, go That's Tracy. That's amazing, Tracy. Go Tracy, congratulations, my friend. So excited for you. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm thrilled. Um, but what you're going to want to do is after, you know, you'll have this here, you gonna need to go in and change it from a cut line to a score line. So you'll notice 
quickly, I mean, it's that easy. So let's just see that again. I'm gonna undo it. You'll see all these lines right now are going to cut. So if we press, you know, make it, you're going to see that. Let's go cut this out um, and you have no score lines. So um, what you're gonna to want to do um, is press cancel. And then what you're gonna to want to do is select this. Um, and then you just want to go from cut to score. So now you have all these little lines that are the dotted. So notice, you know, anytime you upload any cut fall that is not a Cricut Design Space cut fall, you are going to run into the issue of not being able to have it automatically assign score lines. So always make sure that you size these together as we talked about, but also make sure that you change it to score for the proper lines. And Miss Teresa, we will be praying for your father-in-law. Um, so we'll totally, this is such an appropriate place to ask for that. So we love that. So yay, congratulations, Tracy. We'll be Absolutely. praying for the, uh, your father-in-law, Teresa. And how fun. Aw, Rachel, I made my shirt for today using the glitter iron on infusible ink on top. Oh, I love that. Put it Fun. in Facebook, Tracy. Tracy, yes, I need to please. See it. We need to all just, you know, lift you up in the Facebook group today. Oh my gosh, Tracy's the member of the day. Woohoo! Go, Go Tracy. Tracy. Last day of chemo, kicking it out. I love it. And guys, do not forget to attach these together. It will not yes. cut correctly unless you attach these together. So after you change it mm -hmm. so from let's show a them. Let's cut see. to a score. So yeah, so we have all three of these different layers. As you guys can see, you can, you know, press them around and they're, you know, different. And the E is up here. So you guys can kind of see that. Um, I, we do have a question I want to address that is about sizing. So you would take this, but before we do, let's go ahead and stick with our attach. So these are two different layers. So you have one to be the cut and one to be the score. Those need to be attached, okay? So attach those right here. Now they're going to give you score lines and cut lines all together. Let's go ahead and detach that real quick. Watch what happens when we click make it. You're going to see your score lines are now right here. They're gonna be, Rachel, who doesn't want a piece of white cardstock scored with all these random lines? Yeah, I, Good luck trying me. to make that happen. Um, so what you need to do is go right here, select these two layers, press attach. Now, when you need to size these, you want to select both of them. First of all, just measure how big you want your letter E to be, and you'll see this is 8.71. So you'll know that each letter is probably four inches wide or seven inches tall. What I usually do, and Tanner, you could probably do this a hundred different ways. For sure. As it's in design space, once that's attached and everything, I want to take the, this for over for a second. I would have these just like this. You may want to group it. And size these together mm -hmm. as much as I want to. Like, let me just try this. Well, then I'm going to click off and click on these. Yep. Can that still fit on a 12 by 12 sheet? Right. If we say, no, it's a little too big. Okay. So I'm going to select both of them again, size them down just a little bit. We always just want to make sure you're sizing these together no matter yeah. what. So then click off, click back on your E. Okay, that'll fit. Let's see about these. Okay, those won't fit. So, you know, select right, both right, and right. just keep keep at yeah. that until and both And you do want to check both to make sure. Now, they don't have to be on the same mat, Um, although you did attach No, 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 it. you don't want them on the same mat. You right. just want to make sure that you can click off and click on For and sure. know that they can fit on a separate mat. If you get paranoid, feel free to group these together. They're pretty easy just to be able to, again, select both of these and click group. That way, there's no possible way. But then you can't see if they can fit on two mats. That is true. So you, then you may want to ungroup it, but... Um, so you can see that. So that's a good point. If so you really, want them on a 12 by 24, if oh, you've got true. a 12 by 24 sheet of paper. Yeah. Now, although 12 by 24 is very expensive and they are color selection, not as good as the 12 by 12. <laughs> we could say it sucks. <laughs> yeah. So we, we prefer, we prefer sticking with the 12 by 12, but really whatever you guys need, um, we hope we answer that for you. So guys, let us know in the comments right now, what are your questions working with these 3d letters, 3d shapes, everything like that. We are so excited. I do want to pump up two amazing resource books that you get in the membership. If you guys need the um, different uh, resource guides, you can get the iOS guide. This is a 60 page resource to working with everything you need to know about Cricut Design Space with your iOS um, app. This is a book that is, um, you know, really other one that we love is the Cricut printable guide you can download right here on Makers Gonna Learn. Um, we really, really love this one. 
and it's so awesome too. So if you guys need to download these, they're on your dashboard. If you have any questions about these books, let us know, but it's a great day to grab your membership so that you're able to craft rot along with us. So how awesome, but guys, thank you again. Um, I did want to pump those up. And if you are considering joining, feel free to go ahead and check it out at makersgonnalearn.com slash join. We would love, love, love to have you guys over there at Makers Gonna Learn. So um, go with that best value year membership and you can use white cardstock um, and then paint it with something like this spray paint if you love that look like we did today. Um, Dawn says, I never get to join you live. I'm so excited to be here. Dawn, we're so excited to have you. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the live stream. And yay. You picked a good one. Everybody wanted to know how to make these letters. For sure. Rachel, how many friends do we have hanging out with us? We have 190 friends with I us right I love it. Now. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. We are so excited. Check out my challenge on the Facebook page. Carol, we will for sure. Yay. I'll be trying these letters after... Uh, um, up the summit projects. Woohoo! We're so excited. I hope you guys enjoyed the summit and enjoyed everything that we've had in store for you. Um, so now it's your turn to stay crafty and get crafting from the awesome, awesome um, summit weekend. So don't forget to that. keep putting your projects on Facebook. I want to yes, see them. We all want to see them. For sure. We do. We do. We do. Um, so yay. And thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Enjoy making your very own 3D letters add the brads to finish these off spray paint them to s finish this off um, and they're gonna be a lot of fun so someone said that they could add sequins and little gems and beads and yeah, stuff so yeah many things use glitter cardstock um, that will be harder to score just be weary um, so that is awesome but thank you guys so so much um, we love it we love it love it but again if you need to grab your membership go ahead it is the first link down below grab your makers and learn your membership to hang out with us for, um, complimentary free you get our printable guide you get the ios app book um, to master it and there is so much fun so if you guys need anything be sure to reach out um, hi at makers learn.com for all your customer service needs and we've had so much fun getting crafty with you so all right my friends i will see you back here real soon bye